So before I go further into uh, the refraction portion of the V-Ray material, let's take a quick glance at uh, how the V-Ray blend material works. And I have that material assigned to these little LEDs down here. So let's graph that material quick. And you can see that that material is made up of, uh, or assigned a blend material with two components into it. One component is a V-Ray light material. A V-Ray light material for mental ray folks acts very similarly to a, uh, a just a simple surface shader but has the additional capability of emitting direct light if we want to. We can toggle that on but don't really need it for something this small and simple. Um, that V-Ray light material is being fed an incidence shader which means uh, the center of it is getting red while the edges of it get uh, dark. So that's how we're getting a sort of LED backlit effect. Um, the other component going in is this pure, no diffuse, pure, pure black diffuse. Um, and it's only being used for the specular and highlight reflection component. So let's take a look at the blend material. Uh, the blend material has um, actually this should be an additive mode so we're adding the reflections to the base material so the base material being the light material we can blend this off and you'll see the specular highlights go away blend it back on now if this were not an additive mode it's literally just a blend from one to the other um, and you can mask it so, um, but for this purpose, it's it's better to have an additive mode. Um, that's pretty much the blend material. There's not a lot to it. It's really a, a utility to enable yourself to blend various com uh, materials and components together. And the reason we use that, um, again, if you're from Mental Ray, you'll you'll recall that uh, in Mental Ray, I can take the output of a shader and plug it into the input of another shader that is not so in V-Ray. I can't just plug shaders together like that. So that's why uh, V-Ray has the V-Ray blend material. Alright, to uh, to finish up with the V-Ray material uh, or the main V-Ray material, let's unhide this glass object that we have here. And that has its own material assigned. It's just pure glass. Let's take a look at how it's set up. It has zero diffuse color it has pure uh, reflection all the way on. Fresnel is toggled on because it is a dielectric or glass material and does exhibit a Fresnel effect. And the Fresnel effect is tied to the refraction IOR. So let's go down to refraction and take a look at the refraction. Refraction color is all the way up. Amount is all the way up. We have a refraction IOR of 1.6, which is fairly common for, for glass. And uh, let's spawn an IPR render of that. So there's our glass material. You can see down here at the bottom we're getting very dark, sort of unnatural refraction. Um, I believe that's the RT engine. If I go to the setup for that and go into the RT engine setup, you can see the trace depth is limited to 5. So if we take that up to 7 enough, 7 looks like it might be enough. Let's go to 8 just in case. So that should be enough trace depth to uh, get a little better refractive quality in the, the base of our glass. So the refraction uh, area is very similar to the reflection in that uh, one of the major controls of the quality of refraction is the glossiness slider. It will, this will not blur the reflections, it will blur the refraction. So we can take that down and it will become more of a, uh, say, a frosted glass. This will take a, a little longer to sample, in fact quite a bit longer to sample because it is shooting quite a few rays. I'll let it fill in. So I paused it there just for a few seconds to let RT uh, catch up and uh, I also tweaked one other thing. I turned the reflection glossiness down so that I would soften the reflections as well. 
because uh, sharp reflections on a glossy refraction glass would look a little unnatural. Um, so that's the basics of refraction glossiness. Now to speed things back up, let's bring refraction glossiness back up to normal levels. And let's take a look at refraction color. Now at full one, it's pure, purely transparent, but we can tint our glass with uh, refraction color. Let's maybe speed this up by hiding the toaster. So now we can focus on that and speed up RT a little bit. So that refraction color is purely a tint. It is, it's not doing absorption, it's not doing accurate depth absorption or anything like that. Um, so let's uh, think about how we would do that. Let's turn this back to uh, pure white. And absorption is handled in V-Ray through fog color. So let's set that to uh, to a color. And you can see where the glass is thicker. You can see where the glass is thicker, it's really be, uh, gaining that tint. And where it's thinner, it's only very subtly tinted the color that we have in fog color. And the heavier we go on the fog color, the darker that base will become and the more the thin glass areas will take on that, that color. Now another way to handle that in V-Ray is to simply apply the color and then use the fog multiplier. So we can crank up the fog multiplier there and that'll have a much more pronounced effect. So there's that. Um, one last trick which has nothing to do with glass um, but it's a very handy trick in uh, V-Ray materials is uh, to do like a a subsurface fake or uh, what we would call a gummy material and we do that by uh, let's grab that material again let's make the refraction glossiness very low and the refraction let's go up here and make the diffuse color say sort of a pink reddish and now this refraction color acts as a blend between the two. So if I dial it all the way down, now we essentially have a diffuse material. And let's turn off reflections right now. So uh, it renders a little faster. We don't have to deal with reflections right now. And now that refraction color again acts as a blend between that subsurface highly glossy refraction that transmits light through it. We can turn it all the way up to that. Let's make it a little less glossy. So I again pause that for a second to uh, allow V-Ray RT to catch up a little bit. But that is, that's a pretty quick way to make a uh, sort of quick, cheap, um, gummy material, slightly subsurfacey. It's definitely not uh, the equivalent of the subsurface scatter uh, material which we'll go over later but uh, can be a, an interesting cheat. So let's go over uh, a couple more last things on the uh, V-Ray material. Let's turn V-Ray glossiness back up um, to full so we can just get back to a normal transparent glass. The f we'll leave fog color where it is just to illustrate the next bit. Um, you may see, notice that shadows here are not red. They should, probably should be red with light transferring through them. Uh, that's a function of down here under the refraction rollout uh, you'll see effect shadows and that will make the shadows go red. Um, you may not see it very well here. We can create a uh, a quick light in the scene and now you can definitely see the effect of that. Turn that off and you'll see the uh, Shadows are not properly affected. Uh, the bump mapping is, uh, you could just pipe any texture directly into the bump, uh, not bump multiplier, but the bump map. We'll uh, plug in a 3D procedural and make sure the bump multiplier has some value. 
some value less than that. Fairly standard. Now this subsurface scattering rollout um, doesn't does imply that you can do some subsurface scattering effects and uh, yes you can but I would highly advise using the subsurface scatter material this is a very finicky set of controls and uh, probably warrants its own tutorial to uh, really cover how that functions it's much easier to use the uh, sub fast SSS material in V-Ray so uh, that'll probably be the next tutorial coming up so thanks for watching and take care